Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God is a coming-of-age novel set in the late 1920s and early 1930s in an all-black town in central Florida. In the introduction, Janie May Crawford returns home to Eatonville, where local residents, or porch sitters, gossip about why she's come back without her husband. Phoebe Watson, Janie's best friend, visits her to find out, and Janie tells her her life story. In the rising action, Janie explains that she was raised by her grandmother, Nanny, first in a house in the backyard of a white family, the Washburns, and then in a house Nanny owned. Before the Civil War, Nanny had been a slave and had a daughter, Leafy, by the plantation master who raped her. After slavery was abolished, Nanny was hired to care for the Washburns' grandchildren. Janie's mother, Leafy, was also raped by a white school teacher when she was 17. She gave birth to Janie and ran away. Nanny raises her granddaughter in the all-black community, and Janie didn't realize she was black in the sense of inferior until she was six years old. When Janie is 16, Nanny sees her kissing a boy and decides it's time for Janie to get married. Nanny wants to protect Janie from having a child out of wedlock, so she arranges for her to marry a local potato farmer, Logan Killix. Her new husband's neither attractive nor romantic, and the following year, Janie meets the well-dressed Joe Starks, who flatters her and promises her a better life. Smitten, Janie leaves Logan Killix and runs away with Joe Starks. Starks is an ambitious man with big dreams who wants to help develop Eatonville and become a leader in the all-black community. He opens a store and establishes a post office. He becomes a landlord and is elected mayor. But as a husband, he's strict and controlling. After 20 years of marriage, Janie and Starks grow apart. When he falls ill and dies, Janie becomes landlord and owner of the store. Janie mourns, but also enjoys a new sense of freedom. She meets virgil Tea Cake Woods. Tea Cake is younger than Janie, but they have a connection and Janie falls in love with him. Tea Cake and Janie marry and move to the Everglades. When a hurricane hits the area, they flee to higher ground from the Okeechobee floods. During the storm, Tea Cake saves Janie from a rabid dog, but is himself bitten in the process. Tea Cake comes down with rabies and goes slowly mad. In the climax of the novel, Tea Cake becomes so crazed that he tries to shoot Janie, and she's forced to shoot Tea Cake to save her own life. In the falling action, Janie's put on trial for murder, but she's found not guilty by an all-white jury. After Tea Cake's funeral, Janie decides to leave the Everglades because she misses him so much. She returns to Eatonville. In the resolution of the novel, Janie finishes telling her story to Phoebe and feels at peace with her life, filled with memories of the people, places, and experiences she has had. There are several important characters in Zora Neale Hurston's novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. The novel is the life story of Janie May Crawford, the daughter and granddaughter of women raped by white men Janie herself is raised in the all-black town of Eatonville and experiences love in marriage. Janie never actually knew her parents. She was raised by her grandmother. Throughout the novel, Janie strives for independence and a sense of her own identity. Janie's best friend in Eatonville is Phoebe, who's happily married to Sam Watson. Phoebe is the person to whom Janie tells the story of her life. A great listener and confidant, Phoebe doesn't judge Janie as the other porch sitters do. Nanny Crawford, Janie's grandmother, was born a slave and emancipated during the Civil War. As a slave, she was raped by the plantation master and had a daughter, Leafy. Leafy was also raped by a white man at the age of 17, had Janie, and ran away. Nanny raised Janie. Once she sees that Janie is interested in boys, Nanny arranges Janie's first marriage. Nanny hopes that Janie's life will be better than her own and Leafy's. Janie's first husband, Logan Killix, is willing to share his 60 acres of land and his house with Janie, so long as she helps him work the farm. He's patient with her at first, but often compares her unfavorably to his first wife. Janie resents him and is bored in a loveless marriage, and she eventually leaves Killix for Joe Starks. 
Janie's second husband, Joe Starks, is ambitious and charming. After opening a successful grocery store in Eatonville, Starks becomes its mayor, postmaster, and most important landlord. He's also controlling, jealous, and possessive, and he expects Janie to act a certain way, stifling her personality. Starks and Janie are married for 20 years until he dies of kidney failure. Janie's true love, virgible T. Cake Woods, is 12 years younger than she is, and he becomes her third husband less than a year after Joe Starks dies. Loyal and loving, T. Cake encourages Janie to be herself. He risks his own life to rescue her from a rabid dog, but is bitten himself. After his mind is affected by rabies, T. Cake degenerates into paranoia and tries to shoot Janie, forcing her to kill him in self-defense. Mrs. Turner is described as a milky black woman who disparages darker-skinned blacks. She befriends the light-skinned Janie and tries to set Janie up with her brother. Tea Cake resents the fact that Mrs. Turner is prejudiced against her own people and asks Janie to avoid her. After Tea Cake instigates a brawl in her restaurant, Mrs. Turner decides to leave. The pear tree, the gate, the head rag in Janie's hair, the mule, and the horizon and the road are some of the symbols in Zora Neale Hurston's novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God. The blossoming pear tree is a charged symbol of potential and growth. When Janie begins her story, the narrator comments that she saw her life like a great tree, with some leaves representing suffering and others joy. The blossoming tree also represents Janie's sexuality, 16-year-old Janie watches bees gathering pollen while acknowledging her own glossy leaves and bursting buds. She struggles to find the kind of perfect, blissful union she observes in nature and reflects soon after meeting Tea Cake that he could be a bee to a blossom. Janie's front gate protects her from the judgments of the outside world, symbolizing her sense of freedom and independence. Gates in general also evoke boundaries to cross. On the edge of womanhood, Janie kisses Johnny Taylor at the gate of Nanny's house. When Janie leaves Logan Killicks, she goes through the front gate to begin a new life with Joe Starks. The head rag that Janie wears in the novel is a symbol of suppression and control. Her husband, Joe Starks, insists that she wear her long hair under a hair rag because he's jealous when other men look at her. When Starks dies, the first thing Janie does is burn her head rags to assert some independence. Janie's long hair and her light skin color are signs of the successive generations of rape in her family history. The love she experiences with tea cake shifts this history and also builds up her sense of identity. The mule symbolizes mistreatment and cruelty, especially of women. In Nanny's eyes, the mule represents the literal and metaphorical enslavement and exploitation of black women. Black men don't tote the load, the women do. They are the mule of the world. When Janie tries to get the porch sitters to stop tormenting Matt Bonner's mule, Joe Starks buys the animal. He's kinder to that mule than he is to his own wife. The horizon and the road are symbols of freedom and opportunity. Throughout the novel, Janie seeks the horizon to discover what other places are like and what possibilities the future holds. She tells Phoebe that she has been to the horizon and now she's content to be home. As a way to reach the horizon, the road symbolizes adventure and new experiences. Both Johnny Taylor and Joe Starks come down the road, changing Janie's life. Love, independence, race, gender roles, and judgments are some of the themes of Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. Janie dreams of love, particularly a loving marriage. Her first two marriages are loveless and disappointing. The love Janie experiences with tea cake causes her to know and express herself more fully. Nanny's love for Janie is the nurturing love of a parent, evident in her care and attention in raising Janie and her pragmatic concern for the young girl's survival. 
Janie's search for independence and freedom is one of the novel's central themes. This theme can be traced to many characters who seek economic and social freedom despite the limitations of race, class, or gender. In the end, Janie achieves independence, but at a cost. She must act to kill Tea Cake, choosing life alone over dying with him. Race and racial identity appears early in Janie's account when she recalls her shock as a six-year-old to discover that she wasn't white. This conveys the shelter of her all-black community that raised her without a sense of racial inferiority. Hurston pulls no punches in depicting white violence and racism against blacks. The wife of the slave owner who raped Nanny threatens to whip her and sell her baby, hating Nanny rather than her husband for the child he gives her. Nanny's daughter is also raped by a white man, and we see generations of black family, both before and after emancipation, endure the abject power of whites over black women's bodies. Hurston also explores colorism and racism within the black community. Mrs. Turner prefers to socialize with light-skinned blacks like Janie, and African Americans hold racist attitudes toward other groups, such as Native Americans, as evident in comments about the Seminoles in the Everglades. Hurston explores unequal gender roles by showing us relationships between men and women that are just as unequal as those between whites and blacks. Janie's husbands control, constrain, and abuse her. Men have the power to inflict punishment, women don't. Although Janie, more independent than most women, does strike Tea Cake. Only in Tea Cake does Janie find a partner who treats her as an equal, and this is the foundation for their love. Janie is exposed to the judgment of others based on her appearance and her actions. Like a Greek chorus, the porch sitters comment on Janie's behavior and her decisions. Joe Starks also keeps a constant and judgmental eye on Janie's behavior throughout their 20 years of marriage. And Janie's wrenching decision to shoot tea cake to save herself is tried in a court of law. Nature, funerals, games, community, and silence and speech are some of the motifs in Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. Throughout the novel, Hurston makes use of nature imagery. Trees and flowers, bees, the sun, the moon, the lake, and the hurricane often indicate moments of Janie's insight about her life. And Hurston frequently personifies nature, which highlights a central conflict in the novel between nature and humanity. Hurston includes three funerals in the novel, the mock funeral for Matt Bonner's mule, the funeral for Joe Starks, and the funeral for tea cake. This motif calls attention to the traditions and rituals of rural Southern black America. Hurston's repeated references to the motif of playing games, checkers, dice, cards, also conveys the setting of the novel and brings the characters to life. Playing games is how many of the characters relax and entertain themselves. And this motif also shows a sense of community as people interact with one another. More specifically, the game of checkers reflects Janie's desire to be part of her community. Joe Starks refuses to let Janie play it, but Tea Cake enthusiastically teaches her how. Janie lives in several different communities during the course of the novel. Hurston draws a rich portrait of each one and shows how a community can be simultaneously hurtful and helpful. For example, the porch sitters in Eatonville are judgmental and critical whereas the migrant workers in the Everglades are accepting and supportive, except when Janie kills tea cake. At times, Janie relies on her community, and at other times she feels estranged from it. The recurring references to the important motif of silence and speech support the theme of independence. As Janie gains confidence as a woman, she begins to express herself more, Repressive, controlling Joe Starks with his big voice wants to keep Janie from speaking, but Tea Cake encourages Janie to speak her own mind, and this is one of the foundations of their love. Another element of speech is Hurston's use of folklore and dialect in the development of the plot and the characters, as well as the way she incorporates the songs, stories, beliefs, and traditions of rural Southern Blacks. <laughs>